Chapter 90 Who is the Real Killer? 4. You are listening at NovelFull.audio The first condition is that they have to be able to get near Hu Dai Chang. The second condition is that they need to be at least rank 7 in psychokinesis. In Chang Kong country, there are only a handful of people with this level of cultivation, and they all have lofty, official positions. Why would these kinds of people kill someone for the sake of one or two thousand tails of gold? Even if there are these kinds of greedy people who would be willing to kill Hu Dai Chang for a measly amount of gold, Ning Shuema had already spent most of the gold early on and only had around 500 tails of gold remaining. Even if she took it all out and wanted to hire someone, who would risk offending the Grand Marshal for the sake of a mere 500 tails of gold? Everyone was convinced by this argument. The Minister of the Supreme Court, Lan Yufeng, also said in a heavy voice, according to my knowledge, all those at rank 7 and above willing to kill people for money are all members of assassin organizations. The lowest amount required for them to accept the job is 2,800 tails of gold. If the job was to kill the Grand Marshal's daughter, then the remuneration would naturally have to be higher. Lan Yufeng was extremely knowledgeable in regards to the various forces within Chang Kong country, hence, everyone believed him. Emperor Lu Xian nodded. It seems like Ning Xuema was not behind Hu Jiechang's death. Then who is the real killer? Huang Er, didn't you say you had already thoroughly investigated this? Ji Yunhuang bowed as he replied, Imperial Father, before I answer this question, please allow this child who I brought with me to conduct an experiment. At his words, all of their gazes landed on the child who had accompanied Ji Yunhuang this whole time. The boy looked to be around 12.13 years old, and his stature was rather small. He wore a mask which hid any expressions he might be displaying. Initially, he had only been quietly accompanying Ji Yunhuang all this time, but now he slowly stepped forward. Emperor Lu Xian examined him for a bit but did not feed anything strange. Ji Yunhuang was often surrounded by all sorts of weird people, including children. Dot as long as it was not detrimental to imperial power, Emperor Lu Xian would simply close one eye. His gaze rested on the child. What kind of experiment do you want to conduct? The boy replied, testing safety distance. He had only just spoken these words when his figure turned and suddenly appeared approximately a meter in front of Ji Yunhao. Ji Yunhao was frightened and subconsciously retreated a step. What are you trying to do? That child ignored him as his figure flashed again. This time, he appeared approximately one, two meters from Lan Yufeng. Lan Yufeng also retreated and created some distance between them. That child finally spoke again. Your Majesty, as you can see, since I am a stranger to these two, they do not feel comfortable with me being too close to them. If I am within a meter of them, they will want to retreat. Only if they are around one, two meters away will they feel somewhat at ease. This concept was new and strange to these people, but it indeed holds some truth. After the experiment, he simply remained standing there. As everyone thought about how they would react to a stranger, they all nodded. That child spoke once more, Miss who was killed by someone who stood in front of her. And before acting, the killer needed to press their hands on her forehead. Therefore, the killer would have to be at most 30 centimeters away from her. And who can get this close to Hu Dai Chang? Everyone once again thought deeply and simulated the scenario in their minds. Since the case had been proven to have no relation to Ning Shuama, Lord Lu who had been the one to take her away was feeling anxious to prove himself. Hence, at this moment, he immediately answered, her lover, spouse, or children. Chapter 91 the accusation you are listening at novel full dot audio. The boy nodded. You are correct. Only someone very close to her could have approached her without making her raise her guard. Since Miss who had not married yet, she obviously wouldn't have any children or a spouse. Which leaves only one person, her lover. This conclusion obviously pointed to someone. Almost everyone's eyes swiveled to look at Ji Yunhao. The killer was Hu Jiechang's lover, as well as someone who was a rank 7 psychokinesis cultivator. 
other than Ji Yinhao, who else could it be? Grand Marshal whose eyes nearly spit out fire as he glared hatefully at Ji Yinhao. Sixth Prince, what do you have to say for yourself? Ji Yunhao's face faintly paled but he still sneered. He's speaking nonsense. With Hu Jichang's cultivation, as long as the killer had a high cultivation, he would still be able to easily close the distance. If it was an expert, he would have definitely been able to kill Hu Dai Chang this way. The boy lightly smiled. Sixth Prince's words hold merit. However, you seem to have forgotten one point. Come, everyone. Please take a good look at the expression on Hu Jichang's face. He grabbed Lan Yufeng's hand and pulled him along towards the coffin as he spoke. Lord Lan often has to solve cases and ought to have seen many expressions that the deceased had when they died. Can Lord Lan tell me what expression Miss Hu had on her face when she died? Lan Yufeng merely took a brief glance before giving his analysis. It is a look of shock and disbelief then, Lord Lan, what kind of expression should she have if it had been a stranger who had attempted to kill her? Fear and insecurity. Lord Lon answered. After a moment of pondering, he continued, the expression on Miss Hu's face proves that the person who killed her was someone she was familiar with. Furthermore, that person was someone who she would have never thought in her wildest dreams would wish her harm. The child clapped his hands. Exactly. I'm sure I don't have to point out who the killer is, right? Who in this courtyard was not experienced? Hence, after a short instant, they clearly understood who it was. The gazes towards Ji Yunhao were filled with suspicion and condemnation. Grand Marshal whose fists tightened even more. Suddenly, he fell to his knees and cowed out towards Emperor Lu Xian. Your Majesty, my daughter has suffered a grievance. Your Majesty, please deliver justice. Emperor Lu Xian's face sank. Old Sixth, explain. What happened? The fingers hidden in Ji Yunhao's fists tightened into balls. Your son is being wronged. Imperial Father, even if I meet all the conditions of being the killer, I am not necessarily the killer, right? I was extremely close to her and doted on her a lot. Why would I kill her? This matter is somewhat strange. I beg Imperial Father to investigate the matter clearly. Emperor Lu Xian lightly nodded his head. He felt that Ji Yunhao's words made sense. Emperor Lu Xian's gaze once again landed on that child. Immortal child's analyses are irrefutable. However, Old Sixth truly had no motive to kill Hu Dai Chang. He had even come to me earlier today to beg me to allow the deceased Hu Dai Chang to be his first wife. From this, we can see that his feelings for her ran very deep. How could he have killed her? This matter is not justified. Emperor Lu Xian's tone when speaking to this child was very polite. On this continent, there was no one who dared to disregard children. Especially the children who were quick dot witted, just like this mysterious boy. This was because they had a high likelihood of being one of those children who served the ancestor, and their status were higher than that of any country's high officials. And Ji Yunhuang would occasionally have children by his side who were from the Sun Moon sect. When Ning Xuema had caught the ancestor's attention in that public square, a child had also been sent out to resolve the issue. Could it be that the ancestor still had not forgotten about Ning Xuema and had specially dispatched another child to investigate her case? Emperor Lu Xian's heart was thrown into disarray. Chapter 92 Punishment 1. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Emperor Lu Xian's heart was thrown into disarray. With this child here, he would not dare to show favoritism. Emperor Lu Xian's gaze towards that child turned faintly complicated. That child seemed to not have noticed as he smiled slightly. Since he was wearing a mask, even if he was smiling, it still looked blank. Yet, for no reason, they found that his smile was actually very good looking and even felt charming. Ji Yunhao seemed to be attracted to that smile. He felt his heart shake. That smile seemed very familiar. 
He was about to rack his brains to think about who smiled like that when the child's next words rendered him thunderstruck. Your Highness, the Crown Prince, you can call in the midwives now. A midwife was a person who took care of pregnant women and assisted them when they were in labor or when they have a miscarriage. These people had very rich in experience when it came to pregnancies. A high-level midwife could even determine how long a woman had been pregnant just by looking at her belly. Ji Yunhuang had truly prepared well. After Emperor Lu Xian approved, he sent for the midwives waiting outside the palace. The two midwives who entered were famous midwives in Chang Kong country. One of them had even helped an imperial concubine give birth. Under Ji Yunhuang's orders, they came forward to examine Hu Dai Chang. After an incense stick's worth of time, one of the midwives answered in a very certain tone. Miss Hu was already around 50 days pregnant that the other midwife specified, it should be around 49 days. When the two midwives' words came out, it caused the other people's faces to change slightly. Grand Marshal Hu was stunned for a moment before he suddenly flew into a rage. Bullshit. How can she be around 50 days pregnant? That child gave a shallow smile. If the child in Miss Hu's belly was the sixth prince's then she really couldn't have been around 50 days pregnant. That is because the sixth prince had left the capital around two months ago and didn't return until a month ago. That was to say that if the child was Ji Yunhao's, the fetus should have only been developing for one month and absolutely could not have exceeded the second month. The only possibility left was that Miss who had cheated on Ji Yunhao while he was gone, letting him wear a green hat. That child's gaze was cold as it landed on Ji Yunhao's face. Sixth Prince, that day in the tea house, Ming Shuama's words sowed a seed of doubt in you, didn't it? Hence you sent people to investigate. Your people were truly capable though. They actually discovered not just the fact that Hu Daichang cheated on you but who her partner was. You were angered and sent men to secretly chase after her partner to kill him. Then, you looked for Hu Daichang to settle scores. After killing her you even tried to push the blame to Ning Shuamo. That conclusion was as if he had personally witnessed it. Ji Yunhao secretly ground his teeth. This is only your conjecture. There is no proof, hence this explanation is not solid. The corner of the boy's lips slightly lifted. It seems that you still won't admit it until you're pushed into a corner and won't give up hope unless you're at the Yellow River's banks. Fine, then I will have to convince you. He looked at Ji Yunhuang. Your Highness, you can let the other witnesses enter now. There are still more witnesses. Ji Yunhao's expression got worse. With the, immortal child here, no one dared to put a halt to the situation and could only allow it to progress. Very quickly, three people entered. Two men and one woman. When Ji Yunhao saw those three people, his body stiffened in shock as his face paled drastically. Now, he finally knew how hopeless the situation has become. One, this is an idiom for a man who is being cuckolded by his wife or lover. The idiom comes from a story of a cheating wife who always made her husband wear a green hat before he left so her lover would know when it was safe to enter the house. Two, basically not resigning oneself to the situation until they're dead. The Yellow River represents the afterlife. In this case it is referring to how Ji Yunhao is not giving up hope even at this juncture. Chapter 93 Punishment, 2, you are listening at novelfull.audio. Those three people were Hu Jiechang's personal maid, a guard from the Hu residence, as well as a shadow guard from the sixth prince's residence. After a few questions, everything began to be pieced together, and the truth of the matter was brought to light. Actually the matter was not very complicated. Although Hu Daichang looked like a virtuous and accomplished girl, deep down in her bones she was a licentious woman. Taking advantage of her status as the Grand Marshal's daughter, she did whatever she wanted. After she had failed to seduce Ji Yunhuang, she finally decided to settle for the sixth prince, Ji Yunhao. But deep down, she was very displeased with this. Hence, she waited until Ji Yunhao left the capital before she seduced and fooled around with a handsome guard in her father's residence. 
They had been intimate a few times, but unexpectedly, she had gotten pregnant from one of those times. When Ji Yunhao returned, she had gotten him into bed a few times and intended to pretend that the child was his. That day in the tea house, doubt had grown in Ji Yunhao's heart. Hence he had sent people to secretly investigate. What he found out sent him into a rage and triggered his killing intent. The guard from the Hu residence that came in was the adulterer. And the shadow guard from the sixth prince's residence was the one who had been sent to kill that adulterer. As for that maid, she had followed Hu Dai Chang everywhere and was Hu Jie Chang's trusted confidant. Naturally, she would know the truth. Originally she had been one of those people that Ji Yunhao wanted to kill in order to silence. However, here she was, alive and well. The adulterer and the maid had considered their safety, hence they decided to spill the beans on what happened. As for the shadow guard, he did not dare to lie in front of the majestic and imposing presence of the emperor. Therefore, he could only tell them all he knew. Faced with such concrete evidence, Ji Yunhao could no longer deny his involvement. He only knelt in front of Emperor Lu Xian, explaining that he had killed out of anger and had long regretted it. Grand Marshal whose face became dark. Regardless, having one's daughter be so fickle as to cheat on her lover was not an honorable matter. Hence, his face alternated between green and white. Since the truth was like this, he did not dare to ask for much and only awaited Emperor Lu Xian's decision. In front of the immortal child, Emperor Lu Xian could not show too much favoritism in his judgment. Ji Yunhao did kill Hu Dai Chang, but it was because he had been blinded by fury after discovering her infidelity, hence, it was somewhat understandable. Emperor Lu Xian's decision was that Ji Yunhao would be given 80 strikes of the Ting Rod as punishment. Furthermore, Ji Yunhao would be stripped of his prince status and be demoted to the rank of a commoner. He would also be exiled from the imperial capital and would not be allowed to set foot in the capital for three years, otherwise, he would be killed without pardon. Ji Yunhao's face turned ashen, but he thanked the emperor for his mercy as he prepared to face his punishment. However, the boy stepped forward. Your Majesty, I still have something to say. Emperor Lu Xian could only reply, if a mortal child has anything to say, please feel free. The boy said, Ning Xu Ma experienced such a terrible injustice. Is your majesty just going to end the matter by saying that she was wronged? Emperor Lu Xian paused before sighing. I truly did wrong Miss Ning. I and her father were not only ruler and subject, but we were also friends. Thus, I treated her as my own. Since she is dead and cannot be brought back to life, I can only compensate her by conferring her. He was about to generously bestow the title of a princess on Ning Xuemo, but Ji Yunhuang suddenly interrupted. Your Majesty, Ning Xuemo should have originally been your daughter. In dot law, conferring the title of princess on her is not appropriate. Emperor Lu Xian blanked out before looking at Ji Yunhao who was kneeling. So you want to let this evil creature once again take her as his first wife. He had not finished his sentence when he was interrupted once again by his son. That's not suitable either. Sixth brother has already been demoted to a citizen. She should at least be an imperial consort. Your son is willing. Ji Yunhuang had not finished when the child cut in with a smile. Just let me state a few compensations for her. Is your majesty willing? Emperor Lu Xian had already guessed what Ji Yunhuang was about to say, hence he was feeling rather grateful for the child's interruption. He immediately agreed amiably, then I'll listen to the immortal child. What kind of compensations do you want me to give her? Firstly, a pardon for the crime of deceiving the monarch. Emperor Lu Xian secretly rolled his eyes. That girl was already dead, how could she still deceive him? Hence he quickly yielded to this request. I approve this request. What other requests are there? Chapter 94 Punishment, 3, you are listening at novel full dot audio. That child spoke, the finances of the Marquis Mansion have been doing rather poorly as of late. Why don't you give her 10,000 tails of gold? This request was rather excessive. 
in the Chang Kong country, that sum of money would be the total amount earned by an official in his entire lifetime. And the Marquis Mansion was now ownerless, so what was the point of giving them so much money? Emperor Lu Xian felt a bit of heartache just thinking about it. He muttered, this. That child glanced at him. Is your majesty not willing? Could it be that in your majesty's heart, the position of a princess is worth less than ten thousand tails of gold? Black lines appeared on Emperor Lu Xian's forehead. Because he had assumed the child's identity, he did not dare to refuse and could only grind his teeth and agree. The boy also raised two more requests. The first one was that the ownership of the chastity testing beast would be transferred to Ning Xuemo. The second one was to allow him to personally witness Ji Yunhao's punishment. Emperor Lu Xian agreed very quickly to the first request. As for the second one, though he felt that it was stretching it a bit, he had no reason to not agree. The face of Ji Yunhao, who was kneeling there, changed slightly. Actually nearly everyone in the imperial palace was aware that this punishment of being struck with the Ting Rod was rather special. The same 80 strikes could kill someone or it could simply bruise someone a bit. The difference was simply too wide. Under a normal situation, the guards who were in charge of dealing out the strikes would hold back a bit when it was a member of the imperial family. But with this child personally overseeing it, who would dare to hold back? Ji Yunhao was bound to the punishment bench. The four guards in charge of the punishment held the black and red ting rods as they stood next to him. That child slowly approached and lowered his eyes to watch Ji Yunhao embarrassedly sprawled there. The boy appeared to be smiling. That seemingly normal smile made all the hairs on Ji Yunhao's body stand up. That smile was similar to a human dot eating demons. The sense of familiarity increased. He knew that he would not be able to escape today's punishment. Hence, he could only close his eyes as he secretly operated his psychokinesis to form a protective layer around his body. Though this layer could not be seen, it would help alleviate some of the force behind the blows. Like this, he would only receive external injuries at most. That child circled him before smiling. He extended his small white hand to lightly tap on a part of Ji Yunhao's back. Sixth Prince has a high cultivation in psychokinesis, hence you guys don't need to hold back. If you dare to do so, then I'll have you do another round of strikes. He turned his head to look at the emperor who was behind him. Wouldn't you say so, your majesty? Emperor Lu Xian forced a smile. Immortal child, rest assured. Of course they wouldn't dare to hold back. With this threat hanging over their heads, the four guards in charge of the punishment felt a chill run up their spine. They shouted their agreement, yes. Ji Yun Huang, who was standing next to the emperor, had a complicated look in his eyes as he looked at that child. So vindictive, this little fellow is definitely not a compassionate child. Ji Yunhao complained incessantly in his heart. That child's seemingly harmless tap had blocked an acupuncture point that allowed him to circulate his psychokinesis. In that moment, when his acupuncture point had been sealed, the protective layer of psychokinesis dispersed. Now he could not even circulate his psychokinesis. He was now no different from an ordinary person. When undergoing the strikes of the Ting Rod, no one was actually allowed to use psychokinesis. Hence, although Ji Yunhao was forced to eat dirt, he could not say anything. He understood that he was really going to suffer today. That child still was not reassured. He took the ting rods from the hands of the four guards to ensure that they had not been tampered with. After that, he returned the rods before sitting down and spoke while smiling, begin. 1. Forced to take a disadvantage. Chapter 95 Flogging you are listening at novel full dot audio. The black and red ting rods made sharp cracking noises as they landed on Ji Yunhao's back. After three or four strikes, blood was drawn. Ji Yunhao did not want to lose face as a prince in front of so many people. Hence, he gritted his teeth as he withstood the first few strikes. But after a few more, he could not hold back a groan. 
After a few tens of strikes more, his groans and moans crescendoed with every strike being dealt. He nearly screamed out in pain. Cold sweat streamed down his forehead. Upon hearing his miserable wails, Emperor Lucien's face sank. It was just a few strikes with the rods, how painful can it be? He's a grown man and an imperial descendant. How can he be unable to bear this small amount of pain? Why is he wailing so miserably? This is really making the imperial family lose face. Emperor Lucien thought back to the war that year when he had been shot by a poisoned arrow. As the circumstances back then were less than ideal, the army physician could only operate on him without using any anesthetics to take the arrow out. He even conducted the bone scraping treatment to remove any residual poison, causing his blood to flow like a small fountain. All the soldiers who witnessed it were so frightened that their faces changed colors, but he did not even make a single noise, even managing to joke around with the physician. That incident earned him the nickname Iron Blooded Prince, gaining him the loyalty and respect of the entire army. It laid the foundation for his standing amongst the military. He possessed a tough, resilient character. Naturally, he would not wish for his children to be so weak as to whine and squirm at the slightest pain like cowards. Dot originally Emperor Lucien favored Ji Yunhao, but this incident had upset him greatly. Afterwards, the emperor will be slightly colder towards this son of his. Of course, this was a matter for later. Right now, Ji Yunhao even thought of committing suicide by biting off his tongue just to end the pain. It was not as if he had never been injured or taken a beating in his life. It was just that this pain stood on a whole other level compared to those other times. Those rods seemed to have been sprinkled with salt, causing every blow to ache like the sting of a wasp. As salt entered his wounds, he felt like he was being cut into pieces. That searing pain made him unable to contain his wails, making him want to struggle to escape. However, before the punishment, his four limbs had been tied down to the punishment bench with iron shackles. Therefore, he could not escape no matter how hard he tried, causing him to just writhe on the bench with tears and mucus flowing out profusely from his eyes and nose. He looked like a dying caterpillar. When everyone saw his miserable state, they all knelt towards the emperor and begged for mercy on Ji Yunhao's behalf. Even Ji Yunhuang could not stand it anymore and pleaded to his father, imperial father, sixth brother has already admitted his mistakes. After all, he was pampered and spoiled since he was a child, so can you please stop the punishment a few strikes earlier? Emperor Lucien's face became overcast. He too felt that he had spoiled this son of his too much and needed to harden his heart and beat that weakness out of him. Continue. It cannot be one strike short. Anyone who continues pleading on his behalf will be beaten along with him. The emperor's words made them too afraid to continue pleading for Ji Yunhao. Emperor Lu Xian had not finished, and he ordered, shut him up. Don't let him continue to wail like ghosts and howl like wolves. Ji Yunhao was silenced with a special gag that he could not spit out, making him unable to utter a sound T. Because the pain was too severe, Ji Yunhao felt like he was hovering on the brink of life and death. He could not faint even if he wanted to. Whenever he used his whip to beat people, he often worried that he had not inflicted enough pain on them. But now that he was experiencing this beating, he wished that there was not such a thing called pain. He hatefully glared at the child, not comprehending how he had offended this fellow that caused him to be dealt with in such a way. The figure of Ning Shuema suddenly flashed through his mind, causing his heart to tremble. That child's figure was actually 80% similar to Ning Shuema's. He stared at the child's face. Even though the child wore a mask, he still tried his hardest to make out the child's features. He simply stared intensely at those eyes. That child had a pair of extremely brilliant eyes that revealed intelligence. Those eyes seemed as if they were filled with water, like a pair of pure and limpid lakes. Chapter 96 She's simply a little demon you are listening at novel full dot audio. Chapter 96 She's simply a little demon that child had a pair of extremely brilliant eyes that revealed intelligence. 
Those eyes seemed as if they were filled with water, like a pair of pure and limpid lakes. When those eyes looked directly at him, a ray of light flickered through them as if they were laughing at him. Ji Yunhao's body suddenly stiffened. Those eyes were unexpectedly very similar to that girl's eyes. Could it be that this boy is really Ning Shuema in disguise? But didn't she already die? It shouldn't be possible for her to appear here. As their gazes met, they faced each other for a moment. That child's eyes slightly narrowed, causing them to curve into crescent moons. Those pitch dot black pupils appeared to be painted with the darkness of the night. Ji Yinhao's eyes abruptly widened. That look. He had seen it before that day in the tea house. After he whipped Ning Shuema and she was taken away by the crown prince, she showed that expression. That look was exactly the same. This boy is Ning Shuema. He wanted to yell it out, but the gag in his mouth prevented any sound from escaping. That child, Ning Shuema, tilted her head to observe his expression. Seemingly satisfied, her eyes revealed a hint of happiness. Demon. She is simply a little demon. Their enmity was set. Ji Yunhao hated her so much his teeth itched, yet he was currently helpless and could not expose her. Ning Shuema watched with glee at the scene before her. This bastard had whipped her three times and caused her an immense amount of pain to the point of making her desire death but unable to attain it. Furthermore, he even used her as a scapegoat for a crime she did not commit, staining her reputation and nearly claiming her little life. If she did not avenge this hatred, how could she face herself? When she inspected the rods earlier, she secretly smeared something on them. She had collected that material from a jujube tree which contained little insects that secreted a type of poison, producing stinging sensations. That poison is not lethal, but it has a special effect which heightens one's sensitivity to feel pain. It also caused severe pain, making one wish for death instead. She felt this pain was equivalent to what she received from the soul-breaking whip and was perfect for her revenge. She watched while feeling incomparably carefree as Ji Yunhao's handsome face paled from the pain. She had never been a compassionate person. She did not understand the concept of repaying evil with kindness, but she knew how to properly repay people based on how they treated her, be it with kindness or hatred. If you give me a portion of respect, I'll return the favor ten times over. If you wronged me one time, I'll make you regret it a hundred times more. As long as they bullied her, she would think of all sorts of methods to make them pay her back a hundred times more with interest. Eighty strikes of the rod, not even one less. Ji Yinhao went limp on the punishment bench. His back was a complete mess, not even a centimeter was spared. Raw flesh was all that could be seen. He probably could not even manage to stand up. When the gag was finally removed, he immediately yelled, She's Ning Shuemo. Imperial Father, she's Ning Shuemo. Using all the energy he had left, he frantically pointed a bloodstained finger at the boy. This action was like a stone that had been thrown into a calm pond. Apart from Ji Yun Huang, everyone turned to look at the child. Emperor Lu Xian slightly squinted his eyes and looked at the child before turning back to look at Ji Yunhao. What nonsense are you talking about? Isn't Ning Shuema already dead? It's her. Imperial father. It's definitely her. I recognize her eyes. Ji Yunhao's tone sounded extremely agitated but at the same time certain. Emperor Lu Xian looked at Ji Yunhuang. Huang er, didn't this child come under the ancestor's orders? Ji Yunhuang had not managed to reply when the child took off the mask and gave a smile while greeting Emperor Lu Xian. Shuema thanks your majesty for clearing my grievance and giving me justice. Emperor Lu Xian became stunned. Ji Yunhuang also took the opportunity to apologize, I beg for imperial father's forgiveness. Your son was also forced to deceive you. In order to return Shuema's innocence, your son had to bring her to the palace, and it was easier this way. Chapter 97 She is a little demon you are listening at novel full dot audio. Emperor Lu Xian blanked out for a moment before responding. 
He was clearly displeased. What is going on? Did she escape from the prison? She did not die. These words were clearly a trap intended for Ning Shuomo. If she had admitted that she escaped, then she would be guilty of a crime. Ning Shuomo immediately replied, Your Majesty, it wasn't that I escaped but that someone let me out. She had long since prepared an explanation. I was wronged and taken away by Lord Lu who did not distinguish from black or white. He took me to the Ministry of Justice's prison where sunlight does not reach and riddled with abundant injustices. Fortunately inside the prison, the chief jailer, Tu Dao, listened to my grievances and felt indignant on my behalf. He was someone who respected my father, an official good to his people and loyal to his country when he was alive, hence Tu Dao brazenly released me. I could have taken advantage of the night and went far away, but I am the only daughter of Marquis Ning. If I were to leave like this, I will disgrace my father's name. Hence, I remained in order to clear my reputation and prevent ruining my father's lifetime reputation. I, this humble woman, also felt that your majesty must have been kept in the dark about this injustice and would certainly return my innocence if you knew about the true circumstances. Therefore, I went to find his highness, the crown prince, begging him to help me clear my name. The crown prince is a magnanimous and upright man, therefore he immediately dispatched men to investigate this case. Because I was afraid of startling your majesty by appearing so suddenly when the situation was still chaotic, the crown prince let me enter the palace in disguise. Her explanation was seven parts true and three parts false. It could even be considered to be flawless. Even Emperor Lu Xian could not find anything wrong with her words for a while. Emperor Lu Xian hesitated for a moment before coldly speaking, according to my knowledge, Tu Dao is not as chivalrous as you make him out to be. Ji Yunhuang stepped forward. Imperial Father, I have also investigated this matter already. It is true that Tu Dao did not release Ning Shuema out of kindness. In fact, he had selfish intentions in mind. It must be due to Miss Ning's expertise in medicine, which she used to help him cure his legs. This is why he took the risk to release her. His four subordinate jailers and the prison guards can be witnesses to this. He then went on to describe the events in detail before ending with Tu Dao's death from drowning due to being too drunk. He added, Imperial Father, although Tu Dao did commit a crime by secretly releasing someone, he did end up saving our imperial family's name by preserving Miss Ning's life. It was only this way that Miss Ning didn't die with a stain on her reputation, allowing our imperial family to salvage the situation. Hence, he can be said to have done a meritorious deed. Perhaps it is due to the protection of the late Marquis Ning from wherever he is in heaven. His last sentence suddenly reminded Emperor Lu Xian of the nightmare he had earlier. Emperor Lu Xian coughed before continuing. At this point, he could only give up pursuing the matter. Let's forget about Ning Shuema being released secretly for now. But why did she disguise as one of the children who serves the ancestor? It had resulted in him being unable to show favoritism and caused him to harm his own son. Ning Shuema widened her big eyes, and displayed an innocent expression. I never said I was one of those children who serves the ancestor. Could it be that your majesty had mistaken my identity? Emperor Lu Xian choked. Now that he thought about it, she never said anything about being one of the children who served the ancestor, it was just him jumping to this conclusion on his own. It was all because of the strange way she acted earlier which was very odd and similar to the behavior of those immortal boys serving under the ancestor. In addition, the fact that Ji Yunhuang came with her also caused him to reach this incorrect conclusion. Despicable. They clearly did this on purpose. Emperor Lu Xian could no resist glaring at Ji Yunhuang. He was still unwilling to let the issue end like this. Ning Xuema, I have already helped you restore your reputation. However, you did commit the crime of deceiving the monarch in front of so many people. Ning Xuema blinked innocently. Didn't your majesty already promise me a pardon for that? Chapter 98 I'll make you ready, I'll make you fly. You are listening at novelfull.audio.
Chapter 98 I'll make you ready, I'll make you fly. This little girl planned each step so meticulously that it could be considered flawless. Unexpectedly, she even managed to lure him to unwittingly take the bait she tossed out. This time, Emperor Lu Xian truly could not say anything anymore. He could not resist sizing up Ning Xuemo. A little girl knelt in front of him with her head slightly lowered as she looked at him. Her black pupils perfectly contrasted with the white of her eyes giving off an impression of perfection, innocence, and simplicity, but her attitude was neither humble nor overbearing. This caused Emperor Lu Xian to immediately feel that this girl was definitely not simple. Marquis Ning was a hot dot blooded man who highly valued loyalty. His straightforward personality always ensured that every matter was conducted in an honorable fashion. Even his wife was a gentle and virtuous lady from humble origins, who upheld the ideals of a wife and mother never scheming. It was really out of everyone's expectations that they would give birth to such an oddity, whose schemes ran so deep. A true black dot bellied little girl. If you simply looked at this girl, you would get the impression that she was pure like a puddle of clear water, with easily discernible depths. However, upon closer inspection, she would appear to be like a deep lake whose waters seemed shallow, but in actuality held unfathomable depths. This girl was a contradictory existence. At the same time, she also seemed like a small light amidst the darkness, inadvertently drawing people's attention. He could not help glaring at Ji Yunhao. Was this little brat blind? He actually let go of such an excellent girl and stubbornly chased after that brainless Hu Dai Chang. Emperor Lu Xian spoke in a deep voice, you could actually heal Tu Dao's legs. Your medical skills then should be rather high. Knowing so many strange things, I wonder who your teacher is. Ning Xuema answered very smoothly, no one taught me. It was bestowed on me by the heavens. Bestowed by the heavens. Emperor Lu Xian clearly did not believe her. How did this bestowal come about? Ning Xuema replied in a tone filled with certainty, it should be that the heavens pitted me, so an immortal was dispatched in my dreams to bestow these medical arts onto me, allowing me to make a turnaround. What did this immortal in your dream look like? The emperor was really determined to investigate thoroughly. Ning Xuema secretly rolled her eyes. She had no other alternative but to make something up. That immortal must have been using some illusionary technique, making me unable to recall him in detail. I can only vaguely remember that he was wearing a mask and white clothes while emanating a powerful cold aura. It felt like I was standing in a blizzard. Emperor Lu Xian's face underwent subtle changes as he abruptly stood up. The Ancestor Ah! Ning Xuema stared wide-eyed. Ha! Huh. For real! Her random lies actually described the Ancestor perfectly. It couldn't be such a coincidence right. Ever since she had arrived on this continent, she had noticed that the ancestor's name reverberated like thunder, since he held the most influence and ability on this continent and was akin to a god in the eyes of mortals. It was a pity that although she had been saved once by this person, she actually had not gotten to see his appearance. It seemed like those who had seen his true appearance were either non-existent or their numbers were pitifully small, making him truly mysterious. In her previous world, Ning Xuema had encountered countless people with demeanors of being experts above worldly matters, appearing utterly cold and aloof. When people spoke about them, they mostly conveyed irrelevant and baseless facts making the experts seem to be covered in mist. This made them impossible to be seen through, causing people to think that they were ethereal and mysterious. They also caused people to regard them as beings from the highest realm, with high and mighty auras. Since there was widespread adoration toward them, people scrambled and tripped over themselves to become the first to serve them or be their disciples. Those pretentious fakes gave the impression of being miracle dot makers and hence were worshipped as saviors of the world. Ning Xuema had purposely gotten close to a few of them several times and easily ripped off their facades, exposing their true colors. To sum up Ning Xuema's impression of those so dot called great masters. They were frauds who liked to put on airs and lead people by the nose. 
Their true abilities were rather lacking, but their conning techniques were definitely at the pinnacle. Really full of bullshit. You said he was wearing a white robe. Did it seem to be weaved out of clouds? Was that mask on his face different every time? Yet each time you feel a familiar aura. One, it's a Chinese internet slang which means acting or being pretentious. Two, refers to a deceiving outwards appearance. Chapter 99 Who is the Ancestor's Disciple? You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 99 Who is the Ancestor's Disciple? You said that he was wearing white clothes. Then, did the white clothes appear to be weaved out of clouds and mist? Was he wearing a different mask every time, but always had the same aura around him? Emperor Lu Xian bombarded Ning Xuemo with questions. Ning Xuemo responded vaguely. This. It did seem to be like that. This humble woman cannot remember much, because every time I woke up, I couldn't remember the appearance of the immortal Daoist. The only things I clearly remember are the medical techniques he imparted on to me. She replied in a truly crafty and cunning manner, as she did not deny nor admit anything. No one could distinguish the truth from the lies. Could it be the legendary technique of entering dreams? Emperor Lu Xian slowly sat down, but his bewildered expression did not change. Rumors said that the ancestor's standards for choosing a disciple was extremely strict. The conditions were so harsh that it was difficult to imagine them. He would not accept peerless geniuses, imperial followers, he will refuse them, ugly ones were rejected, chatterboxes were out, not to mention dark-skinned people. To sum it up, only a very few could actually enter the ancestor's eyes. It has already been ten years, and no one had heard about him accepting any new disciples. This time, why would the ancestor use such a profound technique of entering dreams just to impart skills to Ning Shuimo? It made people unable to make head or tails as this did not conform to logic or reason. The most important question was, does the ancestor plan to take in another female disciple? Would it not break the sect precept? But then, it could be that the immortal Daoist in Ning Shuama's dream was not him. If that was the case, then who could be capable of such a feat according to what Emperor Lu Xian knows, in the whole Tian Si continent, only the ancestor could use the entering dreams technique. There was no such possibility of a second person. Moreover, according to Ning Shuama's description of the Daoist in her dreams, it more or less fit with the ancestor's appearance. Dot what was so special about this little girl that make the ancestor appreciate and pay attention to her? He could not help examining Ning Shuema continuously several times. Don't tell me that this little girl is actually a genius. And it just happened that on the day of her psychokinesis test, the measuring crystal broke. This will not do. He needed to ascertain her innate talent himself. If she was really a peerless genius, then he will throw caution to the wind and disregard the imperial household's reputation to make one of his favorite sons take her in as a main wife. He suddenly stood and said to Ning Shuema in an amiable manner, Shuema, come with me. Naturally, Ning Shuema had no idea what Emperor Lu Xian was thinking, but she had no other choice and could only follow him. Ji Yunhuang's eyes glinted as he heard his father. His body moved and walked next to Ning Shuema while holding her hand. Don't be afraid. If there is anything, I am here. Father will not be able to do anything to you. His hand was warm, causing Ning Shuema's heart to warm up too. This time she was able to overturn the situation all thanks to this crown prince beside her. She clearly distinguished between gratitude and grievances. She felt grateful towards the crown prince. In her previous world, she worked as a secret service leader. Under her was a group of brothers who listened to her commands. In those days, she lead them through who knew how many life and death situations. Even during the worst of scenarios, she would always say to them the same words the crown prince said to her. If there is anything, I am here. Those words always gave everyone a boost in energy and motivation. 
as they believed in her with all their hearts and souls, she also could not let them down. She used and exhausted every kind of method and approach to reverse the situation, leading them out of their predicament. She worked along the lines of sheltering other people from wind and rain. Right now, there was also someone who stepped forward and shielded her from wind and rain. As it turned out, the feeling of being sincerely cherished by someone is very beautiful. Ning Xuema never had the habit of holding someone else's hand, so she lifted her hand to brush off her beautiful hair, retracting her hand from Ji Yunhuang's. With a slight smile she said, Yunhuang, thank you very much. Ji Yunhuang's heart skipped a beat. Ever since he had met her a few days ago, it was the first time she called him by his name. Besides his imperial father and those brothers outside his family, everyone else who called him by his name made him feel offend, but today, being called as such by this little girl made his heart feel warm.